Okay, so I'm going to talk on, um, yes, yeah, so someone was saying how they were um, doing the lesson, uh, my sinlessness is guaranteed by God, but, uh, you know, reconciling that with karma and also anger at God for where was God when one was going through difficult childhood situations. And also the uh, elements of the question were, uh, why doesn't The Course in Miracles talk about karma? And uh, not that I claim to be um, uh, an expert on karma, but it does seem to me doing The Course in Miracles lessons that The Course in Miracles is kind of using uh, Christian type um, languaging uh, is more sort of aimed at the Western, seems to be more uh, aimed at bringing, uh, if you like, um, uh, uh, mystical truth to the Western world. And so is really speaking to uh, the Western uh, collective on how to transcend the ego to that eternal, uh, eternal place within. So I think it's just using that tack. I think um, Buddha um, has used, um, you know, um, letting go of attachments to realize enlightenment and talks heavily about uh, reincarnation and also the Hindu culture. So I think um, my intuition is that the course was mainly talking to the Western world that's not used to um, the Western world not used to uh, talking about past lives. It is not really in the collective consciousness of the Western world that heavily uh, about past lives. Um, now, when Hawkins uh, was doing research, um, there's a line, uh, he calibrated a line in the Bible where um, Jesus said something like, uh, I can't remember the exact uh, phrase in the Bible, something like, uh, Joshua or, or Isaiah has come back as whoever. And when one calibrates that, it's actually Jesus was talking about through muscle testing, it's confirmed about, uh, you know, reincarnation. But, you know, being in the, the Jewish culture where reincarnation is not really talked about, it's probably to the masses best not to talk about it. He might have spoken about it to his closer disciples. And I think, um, However, uh, it's well known in the uh, Eastern, Eastern um, world, you know, in Buddhism, in Hinduism. And if one is into spirituality, um, past life hypnosis or muscle testing and various things, then one is also aware of it in, in some, on to some level in the Western world. So I think basically, in terms of, um, yes, so in the, uh, once, when one is enlightened, when one goes into the non-dual realm, even beyond form, uh, into the formless light, if you like, then of course, this whole world, it's seen from, it's then understood, if you like, even though words are uh, quite bad, that yes, when one is identifying with thoughts and duality, then you could say that one is birthed into separation, which you could say is living in separation or experiencing one is separated from the light. You could say is living in illusion, experiencing a world of being in separation. So you could say now past lives are just, a, you know, in, on some level to the observer, that's just a continuation of the illusion in separate lifetime, but still the same illusion of separation, one lifetime after another. So I think uh, that's my view. In terms of um, uh, the lesson, my sinlessness is guaranteed uh, by God. Um, yes, you know, once one, um, the way I, I mean, the way I'd probably frame it, it's very difficult for me to articulate and, I, and I, you know, I'm not the highest authority, but uh, from my own experience, it's like, at some level before incarnation, one has uh, chosen um, the journey, if you like, of duality. And when one incarnates, one is given, if you like, a package. You know, uh, one is born with a certain level of consciousness and the karma that comes from one's past lives, if you like. So one um, is, uh, 
you know, the, the, this world is an optimal, um, if you like, an optimal school or an optimal place for undoing uh, one's choices, one's karma. Um, you know, like if, uh, you know, I suspect I was uh, quite, a, you know, sort of a property bandit, property gangster uh, in past, maybe I was a slum uh, landlord or something like that in past life. So, you know, treating others so badly in past lives and being born into this lifetime, I then get an opportunity to forgive people who are acting out their financial dishonesty in this lifetime. So it gives me an optimal chance to forgive, uh, you could say forgive myself, you know, the type of things I've done to others, to have that done unto myself, to be able to forgive them and undo um, the spiritual errors I have made and return to the um, to the to that non-dual to that uh, eternal light but that's free of the experience of separation. Um, anger at God, um, I th you know, I, I sort of see. Um, I mean, one way to look at it uh, with anger at God and where is God when one's going through a difficult childhood, I think, um, is to understand that there are. Um, it's like being born into this world, there is a level uh, initially of unknowing. One forgets one's past lives. Uh, and that just allows one's optimal, um, uh, op there's the optimal capacity, uh, you could say, for spiritual growth and undoing, uh, undoing one's karma uh, and uh, to experience choices. Because if one was already in the light or omniscient, then it there would be no point because one would have already transcended the world. Um, so in the world, as you start to identify with time, with location, with, with separated bodies, then the whole uh, free choice and spiritual growth, that whole, um, if you like, dream or that experience of spiritual growth and undoing that, if, um, you know, uh, as one goes into the lower levels of consciousness, I makes a lot of negative choices and goes, is incarnated over and over again, uh, it then just allows the option for this great uh, experience of, um, of, of life. Yeah, I think from a dualistic point of view, one can see that unless one has free choice, uh, uh, total free choice to make any choice, then you know what what would then be the point of life because it would be you know one could say like you could have a universe where one is forced only to make good choices and is not free to make any so-called bad choices but then if everyone is a saint and everyone's loving all the time it's going to be quite bore you know on some level there, there is no opportunity for spiritual growth and if everyone is just the same and is just you know exactly the same and just totally loving you know the need for separation is, you know it's like you know there wouldn't be much of a need for a world because there wouldn't be much need for choice so it's just one of those things you, you sort of see like when i had my white light spiritual experience it's just like all it is is like infinite light infinite bliss timelessness and that's going to go on for all eternity so there isn't even a this or a that that exists there it's far far more be beautific than anything this world could be. But I think one doesn't get to go through that whole spiritual journey and, you know, the colorfulness of it all. Okay, so I'm going to stop, um, I'm going to stop the uh, recording.